Good morning. 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 Our guest has fully stepped out for now. He'll be back. I'll go see you. Yeah, that was good. I'm here. Can I be one to go to the fun? I know. Hi, Steve. Hi, good evening. Sorry about that. Just want some people around? No, I, I know what it looks like when you bring children to meetings, so I was offering um, space for our, our office suite as a little space for them to hang out in. Oh, okay. Good. They should. Yes. <laughs> Just hope they don't find my snack drawer. <laughs> <laughs> because then I'll be eating after. Um, so I would just like to, to begin by saying uh, kickoff is at 8.20, which means I need to be out of here by 7.45. <laughs> uh, Patriots tie on to read the message. Very good. Um, hopefully we can do that. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's up to you. Uh, it's up to me. Okay. So um, th uh, thank you again for having me here this evening. Um, I, you have in front of you the town manager's response to the finance committee request um, regarding the budget guidelines. Uh, I know you've seen it just now, right? Yes. 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 So, um, I don't want to read it verbatim, but there was a lot of information there. I um, I do want to thank uh, Kerry Lafleur and John Harris for their work on this document, along with the departments uh, for SMT. As you know, I was I received this document very shortly into my time here, and so uh, I relied heavily on the input of others. Um, and so, like I said, they, they did a nice job. I think putting out a pretty comprehensive answer. There were a few things that. Uh, we couldn't really answer in, in large part because I just haven't seen the information yet, um, and I can point those out. But I'll just launch it. Do you want me to? I don't know how this is typically done. Do you want me to just kind of go through the questions? Or? Yeah, go through the questions and highlight what you think sure. we should hear. So question number one was obviously about variances, um, and so we highlight those for FY18 and FY19. Go <coughs> uh, One of the uh, I think one of the highlights is we've been uh, as we talked about I think the last meeting we've been getting. Um, excellent premiums on our debt, and so that, that is created. So I'm sure in FY20 we'll see a variance for that in the same report for the, for the debt service we just did. Um, most of the variances were um, surpluses, which is great. Uh, the, the most largest and most notable um, deficit obviously relates to litigation. Um, are you um, on page three? I'm on page, page one. one. Oh, I'm way ahead of you. I started at <laughs> question one. Go ahead. Um, so there's a large deficit for Esther Brookwood litigation from FY18 and FY19, and we're going to see that again in FY20, as you are all well aware. Um, a few other things. Some of it is um, staff vacancies. Uh, there are uh, a lot of utility costs. Can I interrupt you for just a minute? Sure. But you said in FY20 we're going to see, what are we going to see in FY20? A deficit on legal services related to Mr. Brookwood's litigation. Because I thought I heard that we were going to stay within budget this year. Within the appropriation that we have. I mean, that's, the, the, the past this, year. Yeah, this year. 20 budget. <laughs> the budget we're in. This year. Right now. Right, okay. Right, okay. Um, so, um, like some of the, I, I did, the utility costs being lower than expected stuck out for me. So that's something we're going to look at as we prepare the FY21 budget. Uh, any questions about question one or the answers to question one? All right, question two. Or 1B. 1B, yeah, 1B. So there's a chart um, there to summarize labor costs. Uh, as the note expresses, the, tr the, the growth from FY18 and 19 looks relatively small, but that is um, because the, the CPW labor contract had not been settled. If it would, if it had been closer to 2.2%. Um, the growth in labor costs exclusive of new positions is, 
was about 2.3% from FY19 to FY20. Um, and then those new positions are detailed in the chart below. But I, I do think, um, you know, I, we, I know I've, I've discussed with some of you the, the Randall curve. Yes. Um, and I, have, I may have some different views about that as a comparison tool, for, or as a reliable comparison for local taxation. But I would, I would note that um, the labor costs, notwithstanding new positions, I think would fairly track that, in, that index um, if, they, if it was split out as a, as a single line. But Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. The labor costs that you're showing here, does that include use of the stabilization fund? The salary? The, the new stabilization fund to fund the four firefighters? So I'm trying to wonder if that's distorting what we're looking at. No, these are these are not new positions. This is just existing staff. Okay. okay. So, but in FY20. I'm so in in FY20, the right. the increase of almost 1.3 million dollars. Yes. That is the budgetary appropriation increase. So it does include the positions that are funded through all sources. Okay, and about three hundred thousand is mm -hmm. from the stabilization. Fund. It's probably a little bit. Right. Two hundred eighty thousand. So it's a it's a seventy five twenty five split in fiscal mm -hmm. twenty okay. for those positions. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a couple of notes there. Um, one regarding the, the municipal archivist. Um, actually, coincidentally starts very shortly. Um, but that'll be something that will really be reflected as a three quarter of the year position um, at the end of, and when we report FY20's budget next year. Can you give a little color around how things sh have shaken out with the library itself? Because my understanding was that the previous town manager was pulling that position, which was the um, uh, the special collections mm -hmm. position at the library into the town manager's office as the archivist. And that position, as I understand it, we have a new special collections mm -hmm. uh, curator at the library. So is is that a net one new position in the town, in the town's budgeting? I believe that is a net new position. The, the, it's a net new the position. The municipal archive is, is different than the special collections curator. Right. Mm -hmm. So you had a little bit of a swap there. That you, you brought that you know, position. Well, no, the, the municipal archivist will, I think, report to the town clerk. But I do believe there are some responsibilities with regards to the archiving of the library as well. But I, I don't know how that's... To, to, okay. The short answer so the question is no, I don't know. So it's a net, but it's a net new position. Yes. Is, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a question about the current year. Mm -hmm. I, I saw you just hired a tourism director. Mm -hmm. right? So um, this is like, where, where are we, like a third of the way through the year or something? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so so is that, is that position... Um, Going to be a, like a, a surplus for what the the funding of that or what? How is that? that was, I think that's on the next. Go to the next chart. Oh, okay. It, it's funded. It's funded, but it's funded. but the expenditure will not be for the whole year, I assume. No, it is, I, I believe the position was funded for the whole year. When, when did she start? She started the same day as me, August twelfth. Oh, oh, I right, see. I, I, yeah. Okay, I thought this was just starting no. today. <laughs> Okay, yeah, no, that's she, right. She, yeah. she and I started, Beth and I started the same day. Okay. When I hear her and we can talk about all the stuff she's done, I'm like, slow down. <laughs> start the same day. We're going to start asking me questions about what I'm doing. Um, if you haven't gotten to know her, she's great. I encourage everybody to get on the visitor center and, and get to know Beth. She's a great ad. Um, so there's some of the um, FY19, FY20 changes in terms of... Um, positions uh, is highlighted here some of the new positions or changed or upgraded I mean it's a mixed bag but this explains the the, the majority of the increase um, I don't I think most of this was probably kicked around when you did when you debated the or considered the FY20 budget so I don't need to rehash a lot of that okay. so and again we're looking at a less than 3% increase of, of labor costs for FY21, um, but as I said, I have not received the department requests, so I can't, um, that, that certainly is our goal anyway, but um, without the department requests, I can't certify what the number's gonna be. Um, so then it goes to service staff and anticipate changes. Again, I, they're, they're not due. Um, 
but we've had some initial I've had some initial discussions at the SMT level and with individual department heads. So some of the things that are kind of out there that I'm I, I believe I'll be likely to see in department requests are listed here. Um, fire wants to, it's not new positions; it's upgrading existing positions to create two lieutenants. That's really so you can have a captain and a lieutenant in West Concord and a lieutenant here on Walden Street. So both so both ships are uh, are commanded by a lieutenant and then a captain oversees the entire ship. Um, the way we have it now, there really is not enough um, no state of supervision, but not enough um, empowered you know ranking supervision for both locations. Um, and then there's additional hours for the fire prevention clerk. Um, that job is grown quite a bit, as you might imagine. So uh, chief chief judge is going to make a case for that as well. It's part time right now. It's part time right now. Um, it may go to benefited status. Um, he and I have been kind of going back and forth on what is the right number of hours for a benefited position. And so we're going to haggle that out as, as what we do you go. It, it's, it's not going to go to a full time. You're, you're not sure if it's going to go to full time. Is it I just think more hours? It, it, initially, I don't know if it'll go to 40 hours a week right okay. away. Um, in part from budgetary, but in part the, the incumbent person has a job. I don't think it's available that much. Mm -hmm. And I think they want to. They know it's more than 19, but they don't know if it's 40 yet. And so I think we want to we want to try and find a midpoint. But that's, I generally have an aversion to benefited positions that are less than you know, 35 hours. So that's one of the reasons why I'm going to be kind of hacking back and forth on it. Um, so I, I have not discussed in great depth the additional hours for part-time inspectors. Um, there's a land manager that, that I think um, uh, Natural Resources has long sought. Um, we own, the town owns a lot of land. Um, we don't really have um, much in the way of resources to to manage the, all that acreage. We have a facilities division, but not something for, you know, land that's held in conservation or, uh, you know, passive recreation. So um, they would, they think that it merits a, a new position. I'm not entirely convinced of that. I did meet this morning with the uh, Concord uh, Land Trust. They have a similar situation where they own a lot of land and they, they I think they use through contracts, they do some mowing and repairs and things like that. And so I've asked them to kind of see if there's a way we could potentially partner on that. Um, and then they, um, land uh, planning wants to do a zoning bylaw recodification uh, I, I don't know specifically what is needed in the recodification, but I know that uh, if it hasn't been done in, last, in, say, the last decade, there isn't a set of laws or regulations out there that shouldn't be recodified, you know, on, on a, uh, on a you know, say, once a decade or something like that, because things get added, things get changed, and then numbers and sequencing kind of fall out of whack, and then you get cross-reference problems and things like that. So. It's good, to, it's good to do that, especially since our zoning code is such an important um, document for uh, land use and concrete. And then transportation issues, I'm not really sure what that's about, but um, I think it's kind of a placeholder. Does the, con the conversation on transportation is starting to uh, escalate a little bit. There was a League of Women Voters at a forum last Friday, which was excellent. It's on, I think it's on the Minuteman Network YouTube page. You haven't, if you weren't there and see it, I would encourage you to um, take a look. It was a long one, but the panelists were excellent. And the board has um, broached this topic of transportation with me. So I'll be working with um, DPLM on what their vision uh, for transportation needs are. One of the specific things I do know is that we are looking at um, increasing the service level for Crosstown Connect. And there's also a, um, a grant funded pro pilot program that Sudbury is doing that they're looking for partners on. So there are a couple of micro level things and we may need to put someone in the budget to be a part of that. Um, CPW. Can I for a sure. Um, I was at that forum and you're right, it was really excellent. Mm -hmm. It said that the, there's a match required for the Crosstown Connect. Mm -hmm. Is that what this is referring to here? The match for, the, no, for that bus? No, um, that match is due this year. This is for okay. next year. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure we're going to build something in for transportation. I just don't know how much or for okay. what, but we're having that dialogue now. Um, whether it's studies or, um, you know, maybe matches for grant opportunities or something like that, we'll be doing something there. I don't know if you have any more knowledge. Mm -hmm. so, CPW, you know, they're, 
they could always use more. Um, and the town manager's office, uh, the select board has talked about um, an economic development, of, it's an economic vitality committee, so we're calling it an economic vitality role. Again, that's something that I don't know that that's a full-time 40 hour week benefit position, so uh, I'm spending, I'm initiating a conversation internally about what could that look like, how much would it cost, is it maybe take one position and elevate it and then add potentially like a seasonal position um, to help out in the, in the tourism season, which is, which is a big economic uh, engine for the town. So again, that, that's a relatively new dialogue, but we may look to address that in the budget, in the FY21 budget. And then facilities, as you know, we're still in the process of building out our facilities division. So um, Kate and I are gonna look at what is needed for this kind of next um, phase of growth for, for that division. Capital needs, uh, you, you may be aware we did present the priorities for the facilities at, based on a town-wide facilities assessment. That is, we don't have the final product yet, but we have, it was substantially completed by TBA Architects. Um, the salt shed is kind of a standalone project for CPW that's really needed and that's they're expensive. So that will be a capital item that will be looking to advance. And then um, the number one priority. Thanks. Could I interrupt sure. you for one second? As you go through these, if you could give us sort of a sense of scale, um, like a dollar number, yes. like what does it cost to build a salt shed? Um, or, you know, what's the range of what would- To be honest, I don't know it, because I, oh, okay. I don't know, I don't know. And um, without knowing, I don't want it to be, if I say it's a half a million dollar project, kind of off the top of my head in terms of a million and a half dollar project, okay. all, all I'm gonna hear about is, hey, how come it got so expensive? Okay. Um, is, is this the capital that's funded with the seven to eight percent of the budget carried in the money? Is, or, um, is the project, it's going to depend. On, yeah, it's going to depend on how much they are. But it, but it's it's bound by the seven to eight percent of total budget as a, the guideline. It is I, if they're presented as within the levy limit projects. Right. Yeah. So these would not be excluded debt. These would be within. Well, I, I think the salt shed and, and the public safety, the salt shed, I guess it depends on the magnitude of, of that project. Mm -hmm. Public safety, I would assume it would be presented as a debt excluded project. The other ones would typically be included in, in well, the debt. The next plan. time when, we, when we're talking about this in November, if you could separate it, it would really be helpful to me to see mm -hmm. how much yeah. of these capital are within the levy limit, right? And how much are gonna be funded through debt exclusion if they pass. By then we'll, we should have the capital requests and we'll be able right. to do that much that better. Be right. I don't, we don't have the capital request yet, that's why I can't answer the question. That's fine, that. that's fine. It's just separating those two yeah. out yeah. Um, helps, sure. helps me. Um, so I, I won't go through the, the rest of that list, but it, you can all read it there. I think some of the stuff has been talked, if you've been paying attention to CPA and things like that, these projects have all been talked about for a while, they're pretty well known. So the, the one I, I think might be missing that uh, maybe it's included, but I'm not sure. Um, White Pond, I believe, has a pretty major bathroom facility or something that needs to be addressed over there. Is that is that on the radar or what's the plan no, for, I, I, for the sanitation over there? The, um, Weston Sampson is doing some engineering work, some conceptual design stuff. I think that the, the phase that's really sought after is the access and just to get down to just the to get down to it to have a kind of a, um, like a switchback right. pathway down to the beach right. and then I think they want to do some work on drainage um, on real estate drainage it's runoff right it's the hills around it that mm -hmm. run off and create a lot of sediment into the pond um, that's kind of the first phase that we're really talking about so the um so just the sanitary facilities, mm -hmm. we're just going to kind of go they, with the flow with what's there. Uh, they, see what you did there, dude. Nice job. Uh, <laughs> so no, they actually bought, they actually purchased a um, really kind of high-end portable facility. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. A trailer. So I think that's why they, they got that covered sort of for now. Yeah. So, they, okay. they, bought, they purchased a trailer that's all right. down there all summer. All right. Yeah. And then we were- Nobody moving. had to walk up the hill into those rooms. Okay. This, this oh, okay. Past, summer, past summer, the truck okay. was installed and- I haven't been over there for 
several years since my kids said, we don't want to go there. Yeah, yeah. it's a long time ago. <laughs> <It's actually laughs> <around the camp. laughs> it's appreciated the truck because they didn't have to. Yeah, yeah that's true. Okay, so, okay. so, that's, we got so it's covered. Right. Okay. And, and uh, I think they're, they're nicer than the bathrooms in my house. <laughs> okay. It's a pretty fancy deal. Fantastic. Okay, okay. thank uh, you. Let's, sorry, and then, sorry, one more point. And then, public, and the public safety is just a feasibility study and a, maybe a site selection exercise that we're looking for in FY21. Uh, just backing up to the uh, economic uh, vitality, mm -hmm. vitality um, uh, initiative that the mm -hmm. select board has been kind of talking about for the last couple of years. What, what, what does that mean, economic vitality, particularly for uh, like, you know, uh, residents of the town? So that's an excellent question. It's really, I think the rest of the world calls it economic development. Um, but I think it's because they, I don't, I think because the select board and the, uh, the business uh, round table and um, you know, some of the business groups are, are, are advocating for this. Um, they don't want it to be confused with like development, economic development, you know, like let's build an office park or something like that. It's more um, supporting, um, you know, making sure we're supporting tourism, but doing it in a manner that is respectful of residents and local businesses, making sure local businesses have kind of a point of contact that they can go to if they need services or permitting or something from the town that can be responsive to their needs. Um, you know, maybe helpful with marketing, special events, things like that. So it's, 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 instead of, it's, a, it's not chasing smokestacks, it's more just local concierge service, if you will, uh, for businesses. Um, for businesses, okay. And is there over any overlap or any possible uh, efficiency overlap with the tourism that's, director? That's where my thinking is right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but I haven't talked to the tourism coordinator and um, Kate, as you may know, has been out. So we haven't really had that conversation. And that's her department. Um, so I, we haven't had the conversation of how we frame this out. Uh, actually, I think that we have talked about it in, in general terms, but I, I, I can't really commit to our approach just yet. But other than it's something that I know is, is, is interest in seeing in the budget. Uh, okay, number, question number three, legal services. Um, as you are, as I'm told and you are aware, the general budget of about a quarter of a million dollars is usually sufficient to handle, handle the normal uh, little labor stuff. Um, obviously, the last few years has been uh, a little bit different uh, challenge. Um, Estabrook is the only active litigation. Um, I do think that depending on the, uh, the continued timeline of that, we'll probably increase the legal services budget um, for that. And there may be there may be other non estabrook related litigation. Um, I mean, you never know. So I, I do think we're going to take a long look at the legal services budget and find uh, places where th things that may come up that we need to, uh, you know, so we won't have to come to the finance committee or the town meeting for another appropriation. So. That's an area that we'll probably look at for an increase. I mean, I don't think I don't know that we doubled it because hopefully, God willing, the possible litigation will be done by then. But uh, if it's not, that's something that'll be reflected in the budget. And otherwise, I do think there's a there's a couple of issues that maybe out there I can't really talk about right now that that may prompt me to increase this a little bit from the normal quarter of million. Um, I want to go back to talk about FY twenty for a minute. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the verbiage you have here and said that. You might have to ask for supplemental appropriation at the mm -hmm. town meeting. Right? Mm -hmm. and I, I, I just want to say that I commend you for the transparency of that. I think mm -hmm. that would be fine. Well, we've been at uh, the beginning of last meeting, I think uh, the chair reported on the amount yep. spent to date. So yep. I think we've tried to you know, tell people what's happening. And, um, you know, I, I, no, I don't want to say too much about that. But, okay. yes, we're, we're trying to. We're, we're trying to be open about what we spent. Um, there are aspects of the litigation that are privileged. I understand. I understand. Uh, and, that, and, and one thing we, just, I, I mean, I think you're all aware of this, but executive sessions and privileged things for the select board are for the protection of everybody, not to the select board. So that's why, why they have to do that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's as a manager, it's 
interesting and different to come in and uh, relieve the services that we kind of destabilize. But I think it's uh, for reasons that were, um, I think, good for the select board. Um, I think it was an important thing for them to uh, protect the public's rights, and um, that's, what, that's where we are. Yeah. So I, uh, one point on that, um, whether, I don't know how it gets presented, but I think you need a separate line for that litigation. Sure. It should not be buried in legal services. I think yeah. that's part of the issue with transparency, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Show people what it is for that, that chunk. Right. In our, in our reporting to the board and in the packets, right. it has yeah. been separated legal. And, and I'll tell you that, uh, yes, Estenbrook has been a, a consumer of legal fees, but we have other legal expenses that have been running, maybe not equal, but expensively too, and we have collective bargaining coming up as well. So it's not, it's not like we wouldn't be spending any money but for this litigation. It's, it's yeah. been, I mean, the town, has a very, the town organization is very active in many issues and um, nego you know, negotiating an OPM and, and design a contract for the middle school, um, you know, contract reviews for, um, you know, reviews for contracts for either purchases or things like that. So it's, it's pretty busy for the legal department, for the town council, I should say. Um, headcount, um, you have the attachment B, personnel information. Um, as you know, there, there was an increase in FTEs um, in FY20. Um, I'm not really, as right now, I don't, like I said, I don't really have all the details, but I'm aware of two new positions. I think we just talked about them, the economic vitality and the land manager. Um, I don't know that they'll be in I, or how they'll be constituted, so... Um, as of, as I sit here right now, I have not committed to a new full time position in the budget yet. Um, so on five zero based budgeting. Um, Do you want to talk about this issue on recruitment and retention at all? I think this is just kind of a heads up. Okay. Um, I do think that you know you're right though. I should let people know that we're thinking about this. One of the things like when I since the day I got here, one of the things I've been struck by is the amount of turnover that we've had, and I think it's an unusual number, an unusual amount. I think part of it is natural transition. I think part of it is um, some of these people may be dissatisfied with the working environment. Some of it may be our Chris was here for a very long time, and they you know, didn't want to work for somebody new. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, a variety of reasons, but a lot of people. They should have known better. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they may have Googled me and been like, no way. Uh, so I. Um, how, how much turnover was it? A lot. A lot. A lot yeah. Ten positions. I, I no, have no I idea. Mean, it's, it, and, and it really, if you go back like a year, I think the last it's year. Continuous. Yeah, it is it continuous. continuous. But it what, was it. It oh. didn't. It did not spike because of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. Right there. Right there. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, I appreciate it. So anyway, it, there are a variety of issues. Like I said, some of it's. Uh, and I'm trying to get a handle on what's actually happening. Um, I think there are areas where um, wages are an issue, and I think it's more than just wages, it's compensation. Our, our benefits, our health, our insurance, health insurance benefits are expensive. And so even if um, Lexington, Lexington is paying the same amount per year for, I don't know, make a, an assistant engineer, they're not gonna come here because it's a net cut because of the cost of the health insurance, and because it's a it's a fifty percent employee contribution, it's a high number for employee contribution. Many municipalities are 60, 40, 70, 30, 80, 20. and so it's you know if we want to get talented people who who can serve who are committed and knowledgeable and can serve the town well, we're gonna to have to look at compensation because I, I think that it's a smart choice to have high contribution rates on the insurance because that helps insulate the budget from right. you know wild fluctuations in insurance costs. But that comes to the expense of the employees. And so um, you know I think that's something that like I said, two months in, I'm not really set on a path way forward for that, but that is definitely an issue we are looking at actively. So one of the things that I referenced in the study, well I should say I wrote that, that Kerry did note in the study it, or in the uh, question is we are looking at a compensation analysis. Um, my vision would be to work with our, some of our surrounding communities to see if we can generate some interest in kind of doing a, um, a multi-town study and hire a large firm to come in and, and look at each town individually 
and then you look at the talents collectively because that's where you really get your best comprehensive your uh, comparative debt your comps your comparative data on, on wages I've initiated that conversation with Kelly and Amy Fuller the HR director um, that's not as far as it's gotten but that's something that I think is going to be a high priority I, I just don't know what that's going to cost but that may be something that we build into the budget maybe something we go back for um, uh, we may we may, we may set aside an uh, appropriation if we decide to do that. Um, I'm not sure yet. But thank you for pointing mm -hmm. that. Is there one area that the turnover side of the overall employees? Um, it's high across the board it's in every yeah. department, sort of. Yeah, uh, in the town manager zone, but not not including my turnover. <laughs> uh, it's a whole new administrative staff. Uh, over the, just new over the past year. That's mm -hmm. when you think of an office of. Six people, three, four of them are new, and more than last year, it's it's pretty alarming amount. Um, we've been fortunate to get great people, but it's still you really you really and one of the things you really lose something when someone leaves. Doesn't matter. It, it even matters less how good they were or how long they've been there. But you really make an investment in an employee when you bring them on, and you just you never get that back. It's not just the wages and benefits. It's the training. It's the you know the time spent. With, the time spent interviewing or, and doing all the you know all the stuff you need to bring somebody on. So it's attrition is, is a it's a, it's somewhat non quantifiable but it is costly in the organization, um, especially police and fire because you know or any any position that requires certifications or it's really in depth training. Um, so that's something I really am kind of focused on. So question five: zero based budgeting. Um, my favorite subject. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I stand behind my belief that, um, you know, well, the first part is what is, how is zero-based budget in general defined? I stand behind my belief that because of the high non-discretionary, because of the vast percentage of non-discretionary fund, or, um, you know, non-discretionary costs in the budget, it's hard to do like a true zero-based budget. Um, but the process of examining existing programs and services for both efficacy and efficiency is vital in determining how best to allocate resources. That is a core budgeting belief that for me and, and always has been. So when I tried to talk about zero-based budgeting at the last meeting, um, if, that's, if that's part of zero-based budgeting, then yeah, put me down for zero-based because that's, that is what I've always done and what we are going to do uh, for FY21. Yeah, I don't think we were trying to impose any specific mm -hmm. methodology of budgeting mm -hmm. um, with our this recommendation. I think what we wanted was some assurance, and you've given it to us, mm -hmm. that when you're doing the budget, you're really looking for ways to save money mm -hmm. and not just taking what you're spending now and adding to it, two or three percent to that. Right. So I think we're on the same page. I honestly believe we are as well. There's okay. maybe different path. We may have been uh, different pathways, but, right. but we are on the same. We are on the same spot. Um, and then collective bargaining, I'll be honest with you, I have not commenced collective bargaining yet, but that'll happen, I think, over the next few months with a certainly the desire to get the agreements all done um, before June 30th. And ideally, we know something before uh, meeting the budget for it, but um, we do have a side reserve account. We may have to utilize that to um, fund settlements. Um, so service to the regional high school. Um, not much really going on in terms of direct services. Um, you know, there's some emergency CPW stuff. Um, if they want to look at, they want to look at um, re-examine their, uh, I understand they had a capital project that was not approved at town meeting for parking and driveway. Yes. Uh, I did talk to Dr. Hunter about that. He made, CPW did some design work for that. They may revisit that design and provide some assistance there. But other than that, we're not really aware of much for direct services beyond what you see there. Yeah, uh, and the school resource officer. Which I'll be honest with you, I just whatever it's worth, that's not a service to the school, it's a service to the police department. Um, I think it's well, or it's it's heavily mutually beneficial. Mm -hmm. So will you will receive feedback from the community. We have received it at numerous meetings mm -hmm. that the school resource officer is serving the district, the district which is a shared responsibility, mm -hmm. but it's coming out of, entirely out of the Concord budget. Mm -hmm. So it, it is a staff position that we are funding as a town, mm -hmm. and it benefits 
Well, I would say over 90% of the benefit of that is given to a, something that is shared between two towns. So it's something you're going to hear. Uh, whether you know we choose to do anything about it or not is uh, a different story. But it, it is, you know, it's a thorn that is, is obvious. Um, but I think more than more than three quarters of that ninety percent. That's true. But, but what the, the building is located in Concord. what the community is looking for is some rational way in which there's a chargeback system. Mm -hmm. This budgeted item mm -hmm. gets charged to them, and then we pay for it anyway because mm -hmm. we're going to pay seventy five percent of it through our assessment. Mm -hmm. So in the in the end, we'll pay the seventy five percent, but. There's no mechanism for that, and that's what the community has been seeking, is that when the town provides, clearly is providing service to the district, that, that the district take it into their budget, in a, in a, there's a mechanism for the district to accept it into their budget, and then they can bill it back. It, it's, not, it's not a rocket science, but it, it's just, a, it's not being done. And, and, uh, and, and so whenever we say, oh, well, CPW did some design work, we they don't have a mechanism. We just did, don't have a mechanism. They did do an inter interdepartmental charge. Did they? To, yeah. to, to, the school, to the school district. They did? Yeah. Okay. And then the school district yeah. compensates us back. Sure. So That didn't happen. Okay. Did the resource happen. officer or is that just for no, the No, just for the budget. Yeah. 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 Resource yeah. officer, I mean, how much, how much are we really talking about compared to the grand scheme of things? About 20, it's about 100,000. Yeah, it's all fully loaded. Fully loaded. It's not nothing. But it's 25 k Right. Uh, what's, what's the district's budget? What's our assessment? It's a it's a there's a principle. It's a principle. Yeah. That's it's all. It's the principle. Not I, the school I, principle. I, yeah. I mean, I, I, no, I, uh, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I, I hear you on the, I hear you on the principle. Well, here, so here's some of the principles that you were not here to, to see. We built a brand new building over there. The building permit for a building of that scale mm -hmm. would have been well over a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And we charged them something like $100,000 for the, for the building permit. We just sort of gave them all the inspection work and everything that goes into a building permit. Um, and it didn't even get, even that 100000 wasn't paid twenty five grand from Carlisle because we just, here. You know, it's, a, it's just, these things happen because they're in our town. It's like it's like well, having a. The one thing I, I'm going to push back on a little bit on Dean is um, they are us and we are them. Um, and even though it is a district, uh, it is an asymmetrical partnership between Concord and Carlisle. And the and I don't even really know all that much about it. I really right. really familiarize myself with the district all that much. But I know Carlisle is a much smaller town from a population standpoint. I think their student population is going down, which is going to drive our assessment up. Um, mm -hmm. But the school department is the town, and the town is the school department. So when I, and I, and I'll say I, I, I've been through that before, where us and them, um, I get what, why that happens because I, I know that there in the past there have been issues um, where there wasn't collaboration between the school department and the and the rest of the town government. I've been told that um, you know, we had a big gust right up over uh, over the busing. System. Sure, the busing, the busing I, system, I, I, and the town of Concord decided to build an entire depot to hold the right. buses. And and Carlisle was like, hey, whatever, we would just assume, you know, contract it out, and Concord sort of took it all on. So when these things come up, and there just isn't a mechanism where it's just black and white, this is what this is the way it's charged, this is how it gets assessed back, mm -hmm. it, it becomes more of a problem than it needs to be because we have a very undisciplined you know each time we approach a financial issue where there might be a difference of opinion um it it there's no set way of doing it of, of achieving a result i mean there's a set way of doing it it's, it's and i i don't know honestly, i don't even know what's in what's out for the formula that's a conversation that i that, that dr hunter and i talked about right. having right um but i hear you loud and clear on the principle of the matter and um, I will certainly take take that into my bring that in with me when when we do have those discussions about the assessment. So um, capital assets again, I don't have the plans, so I, I didn't want to comment too much. Okay. Uh, and I, and to be honest, I don't really. I mean, we talked about a bunch of different stuff, but I just, until I see it in writing in the spreadsheet, I don't really know what's a department priority or not. 
uh, and an OPEB. Um, I don't know if you want to take that, Terry. You know way more about than I do. Um, so we talked about this last week. Our current year um, OPEB assessment is just under $1.7 million for the general fund. That was put together based on the June 30, 2017 valuation because the June 30, 2018 valuation was late last year. So we, we would typically have a valuation a year behind to, to put the budget together, but we didn't. So it was essentially two years behind. Um, there is the last page, the colorful page shows you if, if there were no changes to the June 30, 20, 2018 valuation, what the, what the ABC would be for each year. It's um, this this year. And, and so that valuation shows that for fiscal 21, the general fund um, assessment would be 1.2, 1.28 million dollars, which obviously is much lower than what we have been contributing. And so our our 630 2019 valuation is in process right now. I'm hoping. We'll have that in time for the, the final town manager's budget, and um, we'll, we'll know what we should be including. This number is, is really just too low, given the fact that our discount rate that we're carrying right now is higher than for the retirement system, and the amortization is longer. So we'd like to, to potentially look at lowering the discount rate and shortening up the amortization mm -hmm. period. So we've, we've, we're holding 1.5 million um, for now. If it, you know, it may come back, the actuary may say, you know what, you can do that, but it's 1.6 million. I think we probably would want to include that because in the current year we're paying 1.7 million. Um, obviously this table gets updated every year because they're taking, the actuaries taking into account the activity that's happened, how the investments are doing, have we had changes in plan design? Do we have changes in number of employees? Um, any other changes in, in assumptions? But that's that's what it looks like right now. Just um, uh, a suggestion, I guess. I completely agree with you. You don't want to have this going on with with the arc, right? So yeah. if you want to figure out if you think it should be a million and a half because that's really will keep you in the right place. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't get, be playing around with the discount rate or the amortization period to back into the number that you want because right. in a year where things are different, yeah. you're not going to like the answer. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I would be very careful of how I come up. So I, I'm fine with the million and a half, yeah. but I don't want to say, oh, that means I have to have this discount. I'd, I'd rather have you use the discount rate that you think is appropriate, the amortization period that you think is appropriate, rather than... It just feels like you might be yeah. kind of back, trying to back into it. You don't have to. Yeah. I, I think we'll support you at the million and a half. Or does that come from the auditor, for example, the discount rate and the, and the period? Um, it, it does not come from the auditor. It's a conversation that we have with the actuary. Um, since we set up or reauthorized the OPEB trust fund, I will be working with the trustees of town donations on this. So it'll be a conversation with them. Um, I can tell you the actuary, we use the same actuary for, for OPEB and the retirement mm -hmm. system. He works with a number of communities. Um, he thinks either the seven or seven and a quarter is an appropriate discount rate to be using based mm -hmm. on the investments. Um, and I, I know you were talking at the beginning of the meeting, there's no state law that says you have to have this fully, yeah. fully paid by X. So, um, so he'll he'll give us a report that shows if we change the discount rate, he'll do the sensitivity analysis. I've asked him to look at, you know, moving the amortization period around. We do the same thing with the retirement system, you know, and we'll add. Right. You know, we were we're at twenty thirty last year. We were at twenty twenty nine. We sort of go back and forth. Um, I I get the point about backing into it. We certainly don't want to do that. I I just was concerned about. Um, and I don't, I don't even know why, because I haven't had the conversation. If you look, the, 
the required appropriation drops, 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 and then in 2035 it starts going up again. So yeah. I, I'd like to smooth that right. somewhat and figure yeah. out an appropriate way to you smooth know, it's, it. It's art, not science, right, with this, respect, this liability. So to the extent that the actuary can give you a range on both the amortization period and the discount rate, terrific. Then yeah. come back with a range and say, this is where the range is. Where do you want to be in the range? Yeah. That's cool, right? There are those who argue OPEB is really even an impressionist art because some people don't even view it as a real liability at all. They, yes, they do. Well, <laughs> they, the, the financial statements are going to disclose it like it's a real liability. Well, yeah. 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 Gasby did a number on CSN yeah. Towns. Yeah. Yeah. Front page. Yeah. Anyway, so benchmarking, um, I'd be honest, I don't have a lot of experience with ClearGov, so I'll be working closely with Terry to, when those when that data and when that data is available um, on. Um, Basically, they're going to tell me how that's supposed to work. Uh, additional funding sources. Um, so, um, we do look, we will be looking at emergency service stabilization funds um, for the second annual school resource office to set forth in the 2020 budget plan. Um, and after that, after, after those, that transitionary time, we'll go into the general funds. And then, you know, the enterprise funds. Uh, give up the seeds or the Caesars. Uh, and then in terms of additional funding sources, I'm not really aware of any that are outstanding, but if we do get grants that offset general fund expenses, we'll report those. Um, I mean, grants that fund new functions are going to get a million of those, so I know that I would report all those. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to, but if the general fund is directly offset by a grant, you would certainly report that. Is it going to be a power trust or anything like that? Not usually, mm -hmm. not usually. Not, and not for a town like Concord, as well as a lot of times that stuff is um, you know, needs based. Additional information um, just some information about the retirement benefits. Um, we're looking at um, the, the, the pension board looking at increasing the COLA for pension benefits from 12000 to 15000 to make us comparable to other communities. Um, I, don't, I don't think any specific has been proposed, so we'll just keep tracking that one as we go. Great. Right, so, close. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I went on longer than I wanted to. Um, last week when Carrie was here, she gave us a, 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 an estimate of what revenues are expected to be and what costs could be. And she assumed that we would have a, a levy capacity, unused levy capacity of 3.93%. And given that assumption, which is a good assumption, we looked at how much we have available for guideline spending. And then we took the 279,000 right off the top because that's our increased assessment for Concord Carlisle High School because of enrollment shifts. Mm -hmm. So if you take all those numbers into account, we come up with about a 2.48% increase overall in spending. So I just wanted to throw that number out as based on our latest assumptions and based on assumptions as far as mandates that we know of, we're at about 2.48%. Well, then it's a good thing the budget director said 2.5. What a guess. I know, I know. Anybody have any questions? No, I think just uh, we, you come back in, no, in November. Is that so you yes. talk about yeah. that? Yeah. Yes. So when you come when you come back in November, I don't know the date, but I'm hoping that you could get us this packet a week ahead of time, so that we can study it and have better, have better questions. So we're not reading mm -hmm. along with you. That would be helpful. Yeah, that's we'll, we'll do our level best. Okay. And I'll and the only thing I'll say is, um, part of the, the there are there have been kind of delays in the process simply because of my absorption rate. So um, I'll, I'll do my, I, I know how important it is to get the emergency early. Uh, I feel bad to do that. You have, I have not been able to do that. So we'll try our best, but just, I would ask for a little um, dispensation if needed uh, based on me trying to learn it and, yeah. then, and then report it. Yeah, you're coming back here, I think, November 14th. Or so. 14th. I thought so we, we, we pushed, yeah, it, we pushed yeah. it. So you've got a little bit more time. So. Yeah. No. So it's October twenty fourth. Yeah, I think we set the um, we set the preliminary, preliminary guideline, mm -hmm. and then you're back on November fourth. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. I appreciate it. Yeah.
Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Right. I, I went through what I had available yeah, last okay. week, and I don't have anything so, new for So you. I have a comment about the, uh, we're, since we're now going to skip down to committee questions, comments. Um, we have a meeting scheduled for the 17th of October, but I don't believe we have any business in front of us unless the finance director has anything that she needs to bring to our attention. Um, the regular meeting that we would, we flipped the meetings. The October 24th meeting would have normally been our regular meeting and we would have had the school committee in on the 17th, but they asked for a push so that they could come in on the 24th and we will have two meetings on the 24th. We'll, we'll meet, the guidelines subcommittee will meet on the 24th and when that's closed and we're finished talking to the, to the uh, superintendent, uh, after that, we'll close that meeting and we'll open a regular finance committee meeting at which we'll finalize the preliminary guideline. So I don't believe we really have a need for the meeting on the 17th. If anybody wants things to differ, we can see that. I've got you. Yeah. 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 Second that one. But we have to also be ready to have a relatively Long longer meeting. meeting because mm -hmm. we'll need to absorb two districts, the public CPS and, um, and the CCHS yeah. budgets, and, and then, vote a then they vote a guideline. Yeah. So that will be a bit of a push, yeah. Yeah. but that was all we can do um, to accommodate the school districts. So um, so we get, we get a week off, and uh, if everybody's in agreement, I don't know that we need to vote it, but I think we just, you know, we'll just take it off the calendar. And we're going to get materials in advance. We've that's got right. to get materials got, in advance. Yes. So that's going to be a lot to that's digest. So people really night. have to do their really homework right. beforehand, right. and we have to come yeah. with questions. And if we have to push them on the presentation, right. yeah, this is my own I, thing. I, I, do, guys, I, do, I, do, I do believe right. I would I, say, I, like, right. you don't no, need I to think, go through every page, but take us through the highlights. We've read the materials, because we want to get to the questions. That's right. Right. You're right. We know what the school is doing. It's not like Right. Good point. You know, I do think we've been around the block now yeah. with Dr. Hunter a few yeah. times. So right. I think she'll, she and Jared will be Jared, able to You, you go to the school committee meetings. I'm watching them on TV. Yeah. So we, we, you know, yeah. let's get to the question. Let's get yeah. to the yeah. points, yeah? Good. Fine. Okay. Right. And then are we, are we having the um, sustainable growth rate hearing on November 7th? That is on November 7th. Where is that going to be? Uh, we're looking for Harvey Wheeler. Did you get any response? Uh, Harvey on Wheeler is not available. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh. Um, and I am waiting to hear whether the hearing room the hearing is room? available. I don't know what other venues are available. Mm -hmm. Trails End Cafe. <laughs> <laughs> There's one in the public in the public safety building, right? In public space up there. There, there is, but um, that's yeah. it's parking, and, and we don't typically use that for. For public meetings, that's a, a staff training area. What about CNLP? Yeah, I was just thinking I can check with the light plant. Do they have a meeting space? Yeah, they, they, do. they do. Yeah. yeah. There's, yeah. Like, there's Kai's room too. Kai, the, yeah. Those are yeah. kind of small. Kind of small. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they have one room that's. It's the first floor. Yeah. yeah. The first floor room where the NRC uh, where right. the NRC for years that that. If you have just a, a you know, a neighborhood issue, it could fill up the whole room. So I, I, I don't really think that's big enough space. We're hoping but. we would have more <laughs> people. When will we know, Carrie, if the, so, the, the hearing room here is available? Um, sure. I can find out tomorrow. Okay, because yeah. we're trying to yeah, we, get it we're announced dead, in and the yeah. legal women voters, voters and yep. the um, say council we're seven. 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 So. Sooner we know, we can let them put that in their, their calendars and yeah. get the word out. That would be helpful. That was another moment when we didn't need a meeting, so we said, oh, look, we have an open meeting. Let's use it. So, um, so I guess I'll go to Anything else that we need to talk about? I just have one question. So for the meeting on the 7th, are we going to have a prep session for that? or? 
how is that going to work? Here's a great I know question. you're going to you're going to you said you're going to put something in the paper. I am. Um, I we could have we could have a prep session for special for that. Let me think about whether we can call one. Uh, it could be optional. I don't know. Just the 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 way that that we handled that the last time we had a public hearing, the chair pretty much prepared a presentation. I don't think that anybody else would read it and he just went and delivered it. Uh, I was kind of expecting to read some what along the same lines, probably okay. just have Mary run it over. But um, if we want to have a you know kind of session to sort of strategize on how this should roll out, I'm happy to do it. It's not I think we should. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's fine. Okay. Yeah, uh, we can think about that. If, yeah. if everybody doesn't we can, want yeah. to that, that's no, we, we, we can get a small room down in the basement of the library. There's all kinds of different choices okay. that might be and you're going to do a guest commentary in the I am. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. So, yeah. So, right. I think that. Uh, so moved. Second. Okay. Let's go. Thank you.